Reinhard Heydrich was head of the SS secret police, the Gestapo. He was the quintessential Nazi. He was the prototype of what Hitler had wished for. He was, in humanity, personified. As Hitler's totalitarian police chief, Heydrich coordinated the persecution of the enemies of the Nazi state, culminating in the Holocaust. He was feared and hated by millions. You can't just order the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. No normal person would ever dream of creating an industrial killing machine, as he did. Hitler prized Heydrich for his cold-blooded devotion to Nazism and the Third Reich. As Gestapo chief, Heydrich answered only to SS leader Heinrich Himmler. Together, they carried out Hitler's dream of the so-called final solution. Heydrich was one of the most powerful men in the Nazi empire. Yet this enforcer of Nazi tyranny was also an ardent music lover. Whenever Heydrich unpacked his violin and took it in his hands, his face lit up. And whilst otherwise he had a very severe and hard look about him, then his face and eyes would suddenly adopt a warm expression. He was a completely different person. There were two souls in one breast. This is the story of Heydrich's rule of terror. It would lead him to become the highest ranking SS man to be successfully targeted by Allied intelligence forces. Reinhard Heydrich was born in 1904. His father was a composer whose works included an operatic prelude ominously called Reinhardt's Crime. At school, Heydrich was bright and hardworking. From his early years, he loved playing the violin. As an adult, he was a devoted father. Yet this family man who enjoyed many cultivated pleasures rose swiftly through the ranks of the Nazi hierarchy. He had total power. He had the whole executive in his hand, the criminal police, the security service, the Reich security headquarters, and also the Gestapo. He held power over life and death. The contrast between Heydrich's private and public lives was extreme. No one had ever come across someone like Heydrich before. He was the embodiment of the extermination mechanism. Heydrich's cold, hyper-competitive character fitted well with Nazi principles. A champion fencer, he loved the cut and thrust of combat. Whatever the sport, Heydrich was known as a bad loser. He seems to have been driven by a deep need to prove his worth to himself and to those around him. As a Nazi, he saw life as a power struggle in which the strongest and best forced their way to the top. Those he considered racially inferior, non-Aryans for example, were destined for destruction. Even in his teens, Heydrich had flirted with the right-wing racial theories of the Freikorps, and in appearance, he was an ideal candidate for the Aryan SS. In contrast to all the other Nazi bigwigs, Heydrich was what you could call a genuine Aryan. He was tall with blonde hair, a real giant. 
He was the ideal representation of the Aryan being. But in his early 20s, Heydrich showed little interest in Hitler and his fledgling Nazi party. He was dedicated to his career in naval intelligence. But his world fell apart in June 1931 when the Navy dismissed him for conduct unbecoming. He promised to marry one woman, but got engaged to another. Heydrich had Heydrich always suffered from having to leave the Navy. He never got over it, and that bitterness affected him deeply. Lots of people who knew him said that he would never have assumed this role if he'd stayed in the Navy. Within months, Heydrich started his meteoric rise through the SS. He would soon become Himmler's second-in-command, using his ruthless efficiency to build the Nazi terror state. After his dismissal from the Navy, the jobless Heydrich had been interviewed by Himmler at his chicken farm. Heydrich dazzled Himmler with his plans for the SS counter-espionage.